This is an ecosphere. It contains a vast array of plant and animal life, and with a little luck, it will be totally self-sustaining. This is my first time making one, so I sought out the help of someone who makes them all the time. Lucas is a 17-year-old ecology student and has kindly agreed to assist me in the making of this video. This is how we made our self-sustaining ecosphere. First, we headed to the park where I knew there was a fresh water stream. Yeah, straight ahead. Here, we collected some water and substrate from the bottom of the stream. It's important to use water from a stream or a pond rather than tap water, as it contains lots of chemicals that will harm the plants and animals inside the ecosphere. Thankfully, I'm not the one actually going into the pond today. Yes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I am well and truly prepared for this. The substrate contains lots of microorganisms and bacteria that will be beneficial to the ecosystem. It's important to use water from a non-polluted source. Once we collected what we needed, I drove us over to our local aquarium and reptile store where we picked up some plants. And a massive thank you to Aquatics and Reptiles for allowing us to film in here. I love this shop and if you live in Worcester, you should totally check it out. We got our plants and headed back to my workshop to start making the ecosphere. Okay, so we've just got back from collecting all the materials that we needed and this is what we've got. A large five litre glass container with a lid, five litres of stream water, substrate from the bottom of the stream, aquarium plants and duckweed. and these Tupperware containers are full of creatures that Lucas collected on his own. Assembling the ecosphere is relatively simple. First, we added a two inch layer of substrate into the jar. Once that's in place, it's time to add the plants. Egeria densa is a common plant that works well in an ecosphere. Each cutting is pushed into the soil where it will root in no time at all. I'm not sure of this plant's name, but we dotted a few cuttings around the agaria to add some variety in the planting scheme. And finally, we added this plant, which I also don't know the name of. As you can tell, aquatic plants are not my speciality. To minimise the risk of uprooting plants when we add the water, we created a makeshift water disperser, which actually worked out quite well. Though some of the plants did come unplanted, Lucas simply pushed them back into the soil. We added a few lower lying plants by gluing them to the pieces of stone to stop them floating to the top. These were then pushed into the substrate where they will root.
This is the part that I'm most excited about. Animals have a huge impact on the function of the ecosystem. They fulfill many different roles in the ecosphere and are essential to the correct function of the ecosystem. Snails are arguably the most important type of organism in the ecosphere. We're using bladder snails, New Zealand mud snails, river limpets and wandering snails. Snails keep the glass clean by feeding on the biofilm that collects on surfaces. They also break down plants and consume algae. Amphipods. These are some of the more energetic organisms. They feed on a variety of waste, plants and even other organisms. They are useful in the breakdown of plant matter, allowing it to be recycled. Perfect. Got some of the Daphnia in there. Daphnia are filter feeders and consume waste and algae. They are important for the breakdown of waste materials from the other creatures and plants. Each creature is carefully added into the container where they will hopefully settle and multiply. Finally add a little bit of duckweed and here is our finished ecosphere. I think this is a better contender to be called a self-sustaining ecosystem because I don't really like when terrariums are called that, but that's a discussion for another day. I think this is a fantastic project for anybody to work on, especially if you enjoy observing life in a contained ecosystem. It wasn't difficult or expensive to make, and you could do it even cheaper by choosing a smaller container and buying less plants. I'd like to say a special thank you to Lucas who was the brains behind this video. I can safely say that I'll be making more content on ecospheres in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.